Today I'm going to give you an in-depth review of the Powerhouse 767 from Anchor. And I'm going to show you how you can use it as an emergency power backup solution to drive the home appliances. It handled three heaters. That, that was amazing. And even charge electric cars like the Tesla Model 3 and how to do it efficiently. I wouldn't recommend doing this on a daily basis, but as an emergency power backup solution, this is totally doable. You can generate gas at home, but you can produce electricity using this kind of setup. The DC input in the back can take in 1000 watt solar input. I have three of the Anchor 100 watts folding solar panels connected in parallel. Early in the morning, I'm getting 200 watts total output. Pass-through charging is supported, which means I can recharge from the solar panels and power any other home appliances or small electronics at the same time. Lithium ion phosphate battery cells are used with exceptional longevity with 3000 charging cycles, which translates to 10 years of lifespan, even when used daily. Just to be clear, after 3000 charging cycles, it should still retain 80% of its originally designed capacity. The Model 3 charger at 120 volts pulls 1,364 watts. However, I recommend reducing the charging current amperage from 12 to 5 amps to drain the Anchor powerhouse at a slower rate, taking full advantage of the solar input offset. In this case, the output is 568 watts and I'm getting 203 watts input. Therefore, it takes much longer to fully drain the battery, allowing the solar panels to work. To charge the Tesla, the ground bonding plug is required to make this work. Four mile per hour. This is a discharging test with a fully recharged Anchor Powerhouse 767, charging Model 3 with no solar panel connected. 1%, the charging stopped. Let's check the range. Started at 55 mile range. Now at 65 miles range, which means it added seven miles. I'm recording a time lapse using my GoPro. See how fast they can recharge. Looks like the power input is a bit different from my kilowatt power meter shows 1,269 watts, while it displays 1,348 watts. It will take 1.3 hours to fully recharge. It took 1 hour and 24 minutes to recharge from 22% to 100%. In my second test, from 1% to 100%, it took 1 hour and 46 minutes. The wheels are awesome. They can easily roll over small obstacles and seem very durable. They allow me to bring the battery pack to my backyard where there is no AC power outlet. It can easily power a 12 inch DeWalt miter saw. That requires a huge surge power output when it gets started. Five years warranty, 10 years lifespan, 3000 charging cycles, the Anchor Powerhouse 767 is probably one of the best options for home emergency power backup, camping, or RV off the grid living. In this review, I'm gonna dive into great details and show you what it's capable of. Thanks Anchor for sponsoring this video and send me this test unit. Carbon fiber finish, two large handles. On this side, there are two rubber pads that are clearly designed to be used in vertical storage position. One press of this button releases the handlebar. Press the button again to retract. Some basic dimensions, 15 three quarter inches tall, including the handle, 21 inches wide, nine and a half inches deep, four and three quarter inches diameter. There are three ways to recharge the power station using the included three cables. We'll come back to this one later. And let's go from the top to bottom and front to back. Go over all the ports. 
One single press enables the flashlight, which consumes 2 watts of power with 1 watt increment with additional press uh, that brings up the brightness and another press to power it off. The display button that wakes up the screen. The timeout can be adjusted from the phone app, which we're going to cover later. There is a Bluetooth pairing button, press and hold for 2 seconds to pair it with the Anchor uh, Powerhouse app. There's a power saving mode. The five USB ports under the DC output section are managed automatically, which means as soon as the load is connected, it will start outputting power. And when they are disconnected, it will be off automatically. Uh, I currently have a 16 inch MacBook Pro with M1 chip connected, which can draw 100 watts when the uh, battery capacity is low. It has about 80%, so it will not reach 100 watts uh, right now. I can connect additional USB devices to it, such as a USB Type-C to lightning cord to charge my iPhone. Moving to the left side, both AC outlets and the car sockets can be enabled by a single button press. The car sockets are going to be super helpful if you want to further extend the connectivity by adding more USB ports uh, using a car charger like this or use it to power a, a car fridge for example. The AC outlet section has an impressive 2400 watts of continuous power output rating which is 600 watts more than our US household AC receptacles at 1,800 watts. I connected a Dyson hairdryer. Let's power it on and see what happens. The power output will be displayed here. I'm seeing 1,544 watts right now. And I have the heat sent, set to the maximum. And the fan speed at the, at the fat maximum, I'm seeing 1,592 watts. Later, I will connect more device to it and try to max out the 2,400 watts power rating and see what happens. There are three ports in the back. The one at the bottom is for connecting additional expansion battery pack to double the capacity of the Powerhouse 767. The ones on top are for recharging. The yellow one is a 1000 watts DC input. The AC input is rated at 1400 watts input. And this one goes into the wall outlet. The yellow connector is called a XT60. With this adapter, I'll be able to connect to up to five solar panels with the XT60 connection joined in parallel to get a 1000 watts solar array to recharge the power station. If I'm on the road without solar panels nor the wall outlet, I can still recharge it from the car using the 12 volt adapter to XT60. That's a pretty long cord. The room is 10 feet wide, so I think this cable is at least 11 feet long. The Anchor Powerhouse 767 is driving the entire office right now, uh, including the standing desk, the laptop, the monitor, which are connected down there using uh, power strips. The power consumption is at 281 watts. I can use it and charge it at the same time. As you can see, it's connected to a wall power outlet, so it can be used as an uninterrupted power supply. Now I'm going to connect the third heater and hoping it will get the cutoff. Cranking them up to high setting. Yeah, now it cuts off as a built-in safety feature. It handled three heaters. That, that was amazing. Let's run a test with the microwave and the heater. 1,800 watts. Okay, let's plug in the uh, hair dryer.
Oh, the hair dryer cut off. So it looks like it can, con uh, it can keep these, uh, the electric heater and the microwave running at the same time, but not the hair dryer. Well, I think this is a pretty cool design. Uh, instead of cut off everything, it will be able to cut off just one port that draws too much power that exceeds 2,400 watts rating. And these two devices are running just fine without any issue, no interruptions whatsoever. And it's pulling 1,614 watts right now. When I'm waiting for it to recharge, let's quickly walk through the app. Within the Bluetooth range, I can check the charging status, see the AC input wattage, and turn on or off the AC or DC ports. The USB outputs will also be displayed here. It will support pass-through charging, which means I can use it and charge it at the same time. The power saving mode can also be display, uh, disabled or enabled here. The brightness of the flashlight in the background, you can see when it's off, it shows off. It is quite responsive. At the top uh, right corner, it goes to the uh, settings page that allows me to change the AC charging power, high speed or super silent recharge. Let's try that. And I see a decrease in the power input at 716 watts. And it shows 757 watts on the screen. Let's switch that one back. There's a light SOS mode. With that one enabled, it does the SOS. Disable that. A screen brightness can be turned off, low, median, or high. Let's do medium. Save. Screen timeout is, has been set to 30 minutes. 5, 1 minute, 30 seconds, and 20 seconds to uh, save power. Device name can be modified from here. That's the Bluetooth name. The temperature in the uh, Fahrenheit unit or Celsius. The battery health is displayed here. I got 100%. Of course, that's a brand new unit. The firmware update can be checked here. It's a great feature that it supports Bluetooth uh, firmware updates. Then there's a restore default setting. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked the video.